All right, my friends, welcome in. This is going to be the last episode of Otto Den Haag. And, and just for old time's sake, I'm going to, you know, yeah, I'm going to do this at the beginning. That makes sense. I'm going to bump into my green screen or blue screen. I'm going to grab, grab the old scarf. All right. We're going to do the same thing we did last episode, five years into the future. We're going to do it five more years into the future. It's May 14th, 2038. We're going to start with how the club is done, look at the transfers, and as part of that now, now that we now that we slash I have remembered we can look at the bank balance, we'll look at the bank balance to see what's happened with that, and then look around the league and some of the, of the careers of the players that we had. Are they still kicking on? So, insecure jobs, Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool. Uh-oh. Oh, they're sixth, and they finished third last season. That's not gone well. Oh, Glenn is the captain. We'll get there. We'll get there. First things first. Otto Den Hag. How we doing? First. Uh-oh. Okay. I was thinking last episode. It's been five years. So. One, two, three, four, five. They were six in a row. Dropped to second last season. Currently first. And I think it's... they've, they've Yeah, they finalized. Okay, they smashed them. Ajax has still not bounced back, which is... Kind of interesting to me. I mean, they won it last year. So, like, it's either been us or Ajax since 2018 slash 19. But you would think, you know, you'd think they'd be, like, in second. Maybe. Like, us, right? Versus, like, dropping down to, like, fourth or down here. I don't know. That's kind of interesting. Um, so, that's been good. That's been good. Let's just... It says, okay, finances. So, now I'm really curious. Uh... Oh, club attendance is 51,531, and the maximum is 55. Oh, that's, they've expanded again. Oh, no. Negative 1.3 million, but the transfer budget is still 4 million? Wait, how... How is club attendance 50? Oh, there's the garage door. Been a minute since we had that. How is club attendance 51,000, but the facilities are 33,000? I don't know anything about football manager. That's what it feels like sometimes. Uh, right. So have they just... I mean, it's not like they've way overpaid. You know, Gutierrez is still on 90 grand. This Christian guy is still on 120 grand. You know, there, there's some the middle of the of the roster is you know getting expensive. Stan Moravich is there, Brazun is still there, so those those players are still kicking on. Gutierrez, as noted, um, what have the, I don't understand. I I don't I feel like somebody's gonna leave a comment, but I I don't. Let's go back. Let's go back. Okay, so we were in 33, right? But it's like, none of this looks like, there's not like a giant blue bar up to here where you go like, oh, yeah, that, that makes sense, right? Like now there's, you know, 13 and a half million bought there. We'll get to, so. But it must be the wages. It, it must be the wages. And maybe not making runs in the Champions League? I am, I'm really confused. All right, so 33 is the last thing we saw. We did not see Roca coming on on a free. Getting a player on a free. And he didn't stay very long. Oh, that's some good business. You get a player on a free. You play him for eight starts, 12 subs, a 701. He gives you six goals, and then you sell him for $24.5 million. That, so, and, and with that, we're, we have a negative bank balance. I don't... I don't understand. Haji leaves on a free. And again, we're going to let recognize fewer of these names. So there may be that there was a big sign. Like maybe this guy was a big signing that we unfortunately left to go on a free. And maybe that would explain some of the, the losses. Um, Beganovich goes to Bayern or Bayer Leverkusen, I should say, for $37.5 million. He was one they picked up for 10. So like, okay, now we've seen two things where they've made really tasty profits. Like $24, $25 million euro profits off of two players and yet we're in the hole okay 
Gonzalez for thirteen and a half million. Now, okay, that's the there were transfers out, but not for money, right? So loans, Dest leaving on a free, so there goes forty four million out the door, right? That we spent, so that might be part of it. Um, but still, even with that, right? So ten and a quarter, twelve and a quarter, fifteen and a quarter. We like the the quarter number apparently. You know, and it's 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 getting close to the the actual total in the parentheses. So that that's forty one million in, but we sold seventy five million out. Twenty four and a half of that being Roca that we just saw. Another nineteen and a quarter for this Ricardo Rivera guy. Twenty million for Claudio Gonzalez. Okay, so again, more out than in. Okay, right? More out than in again. That's the only one you know, big deal for the Banzumana Baraji. 24 years old, squad player. Okay, we obviously, with the attribute masking, we're not going to be able to really look at these players to go like, oh, but we can look at like their, their history, right? I'm really confused, y'all. Um, 4.8 in, 900 grand out. It's like it's like they spent all the money here, right, in wages. And because I, I would guess the financial position has gotten worse and worse and worse, you know, that bank balance is continuing to drop, which is kind of squeezing their ability to even do transfers. Like, that's what it looks like to me. You know, when you're bringing in players on freeze... Like, who's this guy? A 33-year-old that you're hopefully going to flip, right? We, we did that a couple of times. You bring a player in a free, you flip him the next season. You know, like Diaz that we had, that right winger. You know, that's that's not terrible. Uh, Monreal from Basel for 13.75, you know, but you even it out with 16 and a half. So the only thing I can think of, just looking at this, is it's got to be wages. Like, it, it has to be wages where the overall wage, like we had a, we had players down here in like the 30s and 20s and 10s you know, that were squad players and starting games or whatever. And like the overall wage bill has gone up would be my guess. Right. So interesting. You've got Brazuna listed for how much? 20 million. He's no longer needed and you're paying him 58 grand. Uh, Stan Maravich is still around. Uh, Gutierrez is still around, but has requested to leave. Which is... It's not going to tell us why. Oh, okay, because they only got two substitute appearances. You're paying a guy 90 grand a year on a contract for another year. You let his value drop to 3.9 million, and you give him two substitute appearances on 6.5. That is a problem, right? Like, that's where you have those players leaving and kind of flushing out of the system that you paid transfer fees for and you're paying high wages for. And you're not getting anything in return for it. So really, of the originals, the originals, at the end of this, of our tenure with the club, Gutierrez, Santa Maravich, Brazuna. Everybody else is flushed out. All right, taking a look at some of the players, you know, how have their careers ended up. Ekanath Panya is now an unemployed director of football with a 4-4-3 on his, his attributes for that. You know, mate, you might, you might just give it up. You got nothing. You got no skills. Um, but from a career stats standpoint, Leeds, Saint Etienne, Shakhtar, Shakhtar two goes on a free to national. Like, look at his career: Thailand, Holland, Netherlands, England, France for a year, Ukraine for two years. And then Uruguay. So he's hitting, he's hitting up all the continents. He's got to go to North America next. Maybe that's where he gets his director of football job because, you know, that's what MLS clubs do. <laughs> or, you know, youth clubs. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, he's an experienced international. We're going to pay him lots of money and charge parents $5,000 a year. Yeah, don't get me started. Um, but that's that's kind of interesting. I'm always interested in how it ends up, right? Like, I wish I could understand the story of how this player – like has an interest in being a director of football, even though his attributes would indicate he's probably not very good at that. I meant to show you the manager is still the same. He's been here for almost six years now. They're winning the Dutch Cup and the Dutch Super Cup and uh, the league. 
well, again, we'll take a look at if they've done anything in, uh, in like the Champions League or the Europa League or anything like that. But, you know, that's what's going on. We can do that now, I guess. Competent. We're going to mix it up. We're going to mix it up, folks. Mixing it up. Loss to Atletico Madrid in the European Champions Cup League path playoff. Were they... Has something changed in the Eredivisie? Uh, let's go back to the stages here. Is that... Is that what that is? So only one club gets in straight into the Champions League, and then the other club has a chance to go through the playoff path, but if you don't get that, you get knocked out. Is that is that how I'm reading that? Um, fourth in the group, fourth in the group, third in the group, made it the first knockout round and lost to Man City, you know, after last episode. So, again, kind of where we were. Sometimes getting out, you know, to the, you know, finishing second probably, then finishing third, then twice finishing fourth, and then finishing second in the league, leading to having to go through the playoff path and not making it. Uh, from the Europa League standpoint, uh, lost in the first knockout round and the second knockout round. So really still hasn't made that that like deep run into like a semifinal or final of a European competition, I guess. Okay, just making sure there wasn't anything in the Conference League. Just, just making sure. Um, they lost to Ajax in the Dutch Cup final this season, um, but they beat Ajax the season before. They lost, wow, in two consecutive seasons to uh, Utrecht and Dortrecht once in the final, once in the second round on penalties to Dortrecht. Is that still an affiliate? Uh, can I see that? Can I see that they have affiliates? Affiliated clubs? Yes. It, not the affiliate. Affiliate said, oh, you're going to, you're going to cut the affiliate link? Ah. Um, and then beat PSV two years in a row. That's kind of interesting. All right. I just want to point out Stana Moravich. I know we've already pointed out he's still here. He has 116 caps for his country. For the club, he has 516. Wow. So Gino Des, who recently left, is still a club legend. Is he? He's unemployed. He's, he wants to be a manager. Now, now look at this guy, right? That's, you know, I'm not saying he's like, you know, put him in charge of Adel Den Haag, but like those are some good starting attributes. So I'm kind of interested to see if Sergio Dudes is going to become a manager now. That's interesting. Um, and looking at his career stats, he goes on a free to St. Etienne. That's the second player I think we've had to do that. And, uh, you know, play for like a season and a half and then it was time to go. So, okay. That's interesting. Um, Brazuna's still here, but again, it's transfer listed. They're trying to give a discount of 10% to get him to go. We'll have to see how that ends up. But over the last couple seasons, I mean, my goodness, until this season where he dropped below a seven because he only has one start and nine subs, I mean, that is some value. You pay $8.75 million. Now, you're paying a lot of wages, so, you know, fair. But 10 goals, 8 assists, 9 goals, 8 assists, 7 goals, 3 assists. You know, he drops off a little bit as his involvement gets lesser, his appearances get lesser get fewer but man he's a good good player good player Gutierrez let's take a look same thing this is where we left off last time so 737 on 33 starts with 11 goals and 9 is so 20 20 total goal contributions 22 total goal contributions in the year after that on a 749 18 the year after that on 30 total appearances and then five um last season on 24 total appearances, so dipping a little bit, and then hasn't been used. Did he get some big injury, or they just said, like, we're not using you anymore? Nothing crazy. That's kind of just... I mean, he, you know, physically he started to fall apart, but good player. Good player. Kasoni's still a legend. We saw this. He went to Slavia Prague and has been there, and has been doing just fine, you know? He's not making as much money as those other guys, right? He's going to play for 10 seasons to get, you know, what a couple of them are getting in two seasons. But, you know, having a nice little career, right? Um, doesn't doesn't say anything about his plans because we don't have him scouted. So it's hard to tell if, like, he wants to become something in the future or not. Gila went to Roma. Uh, 
He goes to Genoa and gives him one appearance over three seasons. That's interesting. <laughs> Isn't it? Like, that's kind of odd. Okay. Glenn, still with Liverpool. His manager's about to get sacked because they're sixth in the Premier League. But, uh, okay, we left off here. So, 757, 752, 7.7 with only four assists. Man, he must be really good at something. Um, 7.59 this past season. Good, good player. Good play. I'm, I'm glad, we, glad we picked him up. Barack. Still with Everton, 160 grand. He's down to a, a fringe player. They actually loaned him out to Fiorentina, which is kind of interesting. So he gets to add Italy to his passport book. Um, but does well in Italy. A 7-3-2 over 37 starts and a sub. Comes back, kind of refreshed. 26 starts on a 7-2-3, and then they stop using it. But, you know, and physically, he's 34. He's, you know, is anybody... He's, he's about 110 grand. And a Turkish Super League club is interested. Well, that makes sense because he's Turkish. So, all right. Uh, we saw Panya Carranza retired after Udinese, 39 starts, eight go or 39 appearances, eight goals after Southampton. Okay. Lewis Nielsen makes his way back to Scotland, and he's 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 in the reserves for Aberdeen. I think that's neat. He started in Scotland, and he's going to end his career in Scotland after doing you know doing a job. In uh, the Portuguese, Portuguese Premier League, he leaves on a free. He plays. 27 starts out of 705. So it's not like he went and embarrassed himself. He did a good job. Go on, Lewis. Lucas Kreese is with Michland as a regular starter. Still playing. He's still at 31, so he's got some time. They sold him for six and a quarter. Uh, was that Wheel, right? Wheel, yes. The LOSC always confuses me. Um, that's when we last saw him when he joined on a free. Didn't really play a lot, but they picked him up on a free and they flip him for a profit and then he plays, right? Like, you, you know, you, as you age, if you're not becoming that superstar, you kind of, you know, have to go down a league or two or three and still get some regular playing time. So that's cool. All right. How did Charles end up? He's on loan at Valencia from Hertha. That's not really what you want to hear for your 31 year old striker that you paid 93 million for. Gives him 12 goals and 22 appearances in the season after last episode on a 7-6-1. Only 15 starts, 7 subs. Then it goes to 1 start and 8 subs. That's got to be an injury because he bounces back. the next. Oh, the next season's 1 start and 18 subs. So he becomes that non-star. Ooh. Okay. Five-week sprained knee ligaments. Two weeks concussion. Okay, this was, yeah, after last episode. Tears his groin muscle out for four weeks. So that probably impacted. I mean, you say it probably impacted his physicals, but his physicals still look really good. I think that's just a poor job by Hertha. How do you pay $93 million for a guy and then, like, right? that We saw this last time and give him four starts two years later. And then come back and give him 15 starts. I'm not understanding that. I'm not understanding that. Thought we'd give uh, Mr. Steinman a look here because he ended up at Watford. So again, re review. He goes to Augsburg on loan. Then Watford buys him for eight and a half million. And he proceeds to do, yeah, again, he, he doesn't do great. But they stay in the Premier League and then they get relegated. When they get relegated, he suddenly gets 40 appearances on a 6-8-1. So the level, you know, of the competition goes down. So his, his uh, rating goes up. Then after that, he goes on loan to Celtic and gives them a 6-9-1 on 20 subs of those 24 appearances. Comes back to Watford in the championship. 23 starts 15 subs on a 6-7-2. And then one substitute appearance before they, they sold him. And then he goes to... OFI Crete in the Greece Super League. Greek man 1984, I think is the year's name in our Discord. Probably knows that team. Um, 33 starts, 8 goals on a 701. 
So they still made money on him. He's just had to kind of drop down a little bit from a level standpoint, right? Well, I mean, not too bad, right? 11th in the in Europe is actually better than I thought it was, to be honest with you. And he's picked up that number 10 role. Like we talked about, like, hey, that's interesting that there's nothing in between. He knows midfield and he knows striker. Well, now he knows the thing in between. So that, that makes more sense. Horst is still around. You gotta love some Horst. Again, we saw he went to Cardiff and then Southampton bought him for 30 million and then loaned him to Crystal Palace. After that, they sell him at a loss to Fulham, who are in the championship, but he gives them five goals, seven assists on a 7-1 and 42 total appearances with only five of those being subs. And they get promoted to the Premier League. He stays as a starter, 22 starts of the 28 on a 6-7-5. And then after that, he gets one substitute appearance. They sell him. You know, it's probably like he did, played the first game in August. And then they sell him to Ren on eight and a half, which is, again, is a loss. And then they only use him for four substitute appearances. I don't understand why a club would do this. And then they sell him to Genoa, uh, who gives him 36 starts on a 719 back in Serie A. So, again, a good level. And then last season, or this uh, current season, 18 starts, 12 subs on a 684. It's not bad. That, that, I, I love I love players that do this, like Germany, the Netherlands, England for one, two, three, technically four teams, France for a year, and then Italy, like getting the full tour. We saw Brazuna. I wanted to see what Almada was doing. Almada again went to Fiorentina. He leaves on a free to Spa. They loan him to a Paraguayan team. Which is not home. He's Argentinian. That's odd. But uh, Spall in Serie Bay picked him up on a free. On, on a 704, gives him five goals and six assists. Helps him get promoted. His utilization goes down. And then they loan him out. He's still with them, but hasn't been used. I guess maybe it's because it's the calendar year. So maybe he's just come back or about to come back or something like that. But, you know. Caviglia ended up going to Cagliari. We saw that. But then after that, he goes to Charlton for 25 appearances and a goal. Get dead, son. Can't forget about Armel. Still at Juve. 350 grand. Contract for another two years. Regular starter. All green down here. Unbelievable. They're getting much more out of him than I was. So, you know, good on him. I mean, again, we were getting all right out of him, but not we weren't getting double digit goals and uh, assists like like they did in the last season of last episode, right? On a 779. He did a 793 in Syria. A 793 in Syria. I just a 793 in Syria. 8 goals, 13 assists, 8 players of the match in the first season of this episode, right? And then a 757, a 773, a 773, you know, I wonder if he had an injury because his utilization went down a little bit this year, but there's, it's not like they're, it's not that normal slide, right? Like he's still like, it, it sounds like if he's available, they're playing him. Okay. Twice sprained ankle ligaments each time for three weeks. So that's going to limit your capabilities, right? Um, in terms of being able to come right back in. So maybe he had to pick up a couple of games there, but elite attacking mid playing as a 10, I guess. No. Why does it call him an elite attacking mid? Explain that to me. He's playing as a deep line playmaker. He's not a... You call him elite midfielder. He's not elite 10. He's he's a, he's, a, he's like an 8. Explain that to me. Tinoco goes from the United States to Saudi Arabia for El Ali. Um, and he's... Honestly, it's like he had to ramp up. Also, probably because of the the seasons here with MLS. So, he eventually comes in for $4.2 million. So, they sell him at a loss. Um, he gets nine starts on a 701. The next season, 17 starts and a sub on a 704. And then this season, 29 starts and a sub on a 744, which is kind of odd. Like, that's that's not the trajectory you usually see for a guy who's 31, right? Like, you'd think he'd like come straight in. But it's almost like he had to, like, earn his way into it. And uh, he's making forty four grand a week. Now, he's only got a year left, so that's interesting. I think I found some of the uh, the financial slippage here. I saw it. Well, it was just here. The uh, the guy they, they spent $30.5 million on right after left, Aster Vrengsch. $30.5 million, like two or three seasons before, 
sell them for 5.5. And I, I, I may have pointed that out last episode. I don't remember, but they're like 25 million evaporates, not to mention his wages, right? Like it just goes, it just goes. So obviously that, but still, I, I still think I'd love to get a comment or several on this, but I think it has to be the wages because even with that, right? Even with this one, how many seasons are there where there's more blue than yellow? One very tiny amount, two, 13 and a half million, and then three. But those are all dwarfed by the seasons where there's significantly more selling than buying, I think. So the only thing I can imagine is maybe they've expanded to the stadium and maybe maybe they're in the middle of paying for upgrading the stadium because of the, the, the tent. Or am I just misinterpreting the attendance thing, right? Like club attendance, is that you know, from the local area. I don't know. I don't, I don't mess with the editor. If you could tell, um, I'm just wondering if they have a facility that's like under construction or something. Um, it's still the same stadium. Doesn't say anything about anything being under construction. They still got their sponsorship deal, you know, like where did the money go? It has to be the wages. That's the only thing that makes sense besides having like you pay 30 million for a player and he leaves for five and a half. You know, like that, that adds up pretty quick, but I'm pretty shocked that they're in the negative. Like, I think that's saying, that's an understatement. Are you shocked? Is there something I missed? Oh, did we, we didn't do the Champions League or anything. Well, let's go do that. All right. Man United, Chelsea, Man City, Man United. All English. The only non-EPL teams to even be in the mix are Juve losing in the final to Man City and Bayern losing to Man United in the final which is honestly a tad bit surprising um in the europa league bruce mentioned gladbach again aston villa hello by leverkusen leipzig um leon arsenal salzburg and liverpool and your runners up the conference league because we care about that i don't think we looked at this last time you get galatasaray ac milan aston villa benfica roma roma arsenal everton real san sebastian lester wins it you know going going back and then we'll take a look at the world cup Oh, we're, we're in the midst of it. Okay. Portugal wins the 2034. England is the runner-up. Sorry to all my fans of football manager in England. Twice the bridesmaid, never the bride. Argentina, Portugal, or Argentina as the as the as the third place after that. Uh yeah. And just because I'm from the United States, just looking at what they've done throughout the save. Third in the World Cup group, lost to Mexico in the in the second round, lost to Portugal in the third round. Well, that's all right. Um, third in the group, not great. Second in the group in 2038. So, yay. Or no, or is it showing them second because it's currently going on? Like, they're alphabetically second. And last but not least, you've got the Euros. Ukraine won the Euros in 2036. Portugal is the runner-up. Why doesn't it list any third place teams? Is that not a thing anymore? Hosted in Scotland slash Wales. That's kind of interesting. A combo bid, but not in England. Like, give it to the rest. What, what about Northern Ireland? What's up? Why can't Northern Ireland host it? You know what I'm saying? All right, my friends, that's it. If there's stuff that I missed, you can hop in the Discord. I'll be glad to look it up for you. The link to that's in the description, as well as the link to financially support the channel with Patreon or YouTube membership or Teespring or whatever you want. Um, if you haven't bought FM21 and you see a sale, you can go to Humble Bundle. I've got a link for that where I get a very, 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 very small commission. Um, it doesn't increase your cost. It's just a, a way to earn some affiliate income for the channel. I've had some people ask what's next. I'm going to be taking a little bit of a break. We're going to have Relegation Ranger and an International Argentina save. So Relegation Ranger, in case you're not uh, familiar with that, I've done it previously on the channel. And I've, I've had somebody, I can't remember who it is, I apologize, call it the Sam Allard, Allardyce Simulator. It's like, you are a high-rated coach. I'm going to max out my attributes and my badges. And you you fast forward or you holiday until like Christmas of the first um, season. And you see what's available. And you start applying to those jobs that are in the relegation zone. And you try and rescue those clubs. You stay for six months. And then you're out. And you go someplace else. So hopefully we get a thing where I, I take over a club in December. We rescue them. We leave in the summer. And we pick up another club in the summer 
Now, what we've run into a little bit in the past is if you leave jobs that quickly, then the the match engine or the game engine inside of Football Manager doesn't like that, even though that can happen in reality. We're, we're clubs pick up managers, so it may end up being a, every Christmas we look at it. You kind of have to be flexible, but I do think it's going to help that I'm going to start out with maximum badges and the, and the highest coaching attributes. Last time it wasn't as high, and that led to it being a lot more difficult to get a job versus if you're like a top rated manager coming in, you hopefully get more calls. So we'll do that. We're going to do a save with Argentina um, from an international save. I've never managed Messi. I think that'll be interesting. So that's coming up. I do appreciate all your support. Marky Mark 2, once again, thank you for sending me the scarf. It's incredible. I, I literally, I keep it in the office. So that's freaking awesome. Um, hit the like button, my friends. And we'll see you in the next one. Have a good one. Oh, my God.